Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. Today, we're going to be looking at how to beat the Crazed Axe Berserk Insane. This guide has some prerequisites, some things that you're expected to have in order to be able to do the level with the same units that I use. I'll explain alternatives in a bit, but some of the stuff isn't related to units. For example, you really do need all superior treasure on all of Empire of Cats. This gives you a good stead for anywhere in the game, and by this point, you should definitely have it. Otherwise, you're really just making things a lot more difficult for yourself. And in Into the Future, treasures can look a little bit more specific. Because most of them are anti-alien, and we don't need to worry about aliens in this level, you're looking for blood fruit and sky fruit to be all superior in order to give you a benefit in this level this will make abilities against enemies in this level stronger and i have all superior for those two in into the future chapter one and two and if you can in into the future chapter three that will make things easier now this guide follows on in a series of guides and before this stage we've actually done all of the other craze cat stages there are a couple of reasons for that this one is traditionally seen as the most difficult but perhaps most importantly, this one doesn't give you a unit that is helpful on other Crazed Cat stages. The order that you do the Crazed Cats in should really be to give you units that will help you do Crazed Cat stages. Thus, I recommend starting with the Crazed Cat, which you're expected to have, then on to the Crazed Tank, which you're also expected to have. Now, these don't matter so much because they're meat shields and you can swap them out for meat shields that cost the same, although I definitely advise against using Little Wall Cat because that is a waste of 150 monies. Just swap in something for 75 monies if that's all you could use at 150. Things like Jiangxi, if you have that, are very useful alternatives as well. Definitely needed crazes are the crazed whale cats and crazed dragon cats. These will really help for stacking, which you need to do a lot of in this level, and there aren't particularly any alternatives, although you can perhaps look towards bigger ticket units that you have. Check the range of them on the Battle Cats wiki, which I'll link in the description, against the range of the enemies in the level, and if your number is bigger, they should be good to use, especially if they're traded against red or traitless for the crazed axe. As for true forms, you're expected to have a Razor Cat, and in this guide series you have been for a while. There is a significant advantage to having a Razor Cat to if your Wall Cat, say, was level 20 plus 9. There's not just plus 1 levels worth of difference. You get a huge advantage in protectability. Try the level if you don't have a Razor. Unfortunately, though, it will just be a lot more difficult. And I definitely advise having Macho Leg Cat the true form of gross cat because this one does seem markedly better than using sexy legs cat as well now dragon don't expect you to have the true form for this one and in fact the true form benefit here is not as clear cut in this stage you might actually want to use dragon anyway because its recharge time is shorter than that of king dragon the true form and that helps you to stack up more units which is probably actually what you want here my dragon cat is level 20 plus 6 but it seems to be at a level that i can beat this level with so hopefully you can too and then our final true form that you definitely need here holy valkyrie cat this true form is essential here because chance to freeze that it gives you 30 percent chance to freeze you're relying on that because the units need to be stopped in their endless advance towards your base as an alternative you can use a run cat i felt like valkyrie was possibly more accessible so we're going to be using this in this representation of the guide but where you're freezing enemy units of the holy valkyrie cat you could use a run cat in exactly the same way to knock back the enemy units so up to you what you use really and our big damager is crazed bahamut cat Again, if you have an Uber, for example, with enough range that is traded against red, pretty fantastic. I definitely recommend using that. But Craze Bahamut Cat, which everyone gets access to after completing Empire of Cats, should be good enough. 
You may see my cannon firing very readily and quickly. That is because I've never upgraded my cat cannon power, and that gives you a much faster recharge time for the cannon. Unfortunately, there is, as it stands, no way to sort of un-upgrade that cat cannon power, and it's something you have no reason to realise that you shouldn't do at the start of the game. However, the cat cannon isn't actually really helping us in this stage. If anything, it can actually hinder you by making Bahamut miss an attack, unless you are able to equip slow beam, for example, on your cannon, which would definitely be more helpful than the standard cannon. Knocking back is also something to bear in mind if you use a ruin. That could also make your Bahamut miss its attack. Fundamentally, you're looking to slow or freeze the red enemies and the crazed cats are priority, then knocking back is something that you can do, and then those are the big three abilities that you're looking for. Keeping them in stasis allows Bahamut to get more of the units with its area of effect attack, but if you're constantly knocking them back, you're keeping them away from yourself, and that means you should be able to get the level done. As for items, this level starts immediately with the crazed axe coming out, so you don't really have much time to build up your worker cat. For that reason, I definitely recommend putting on a rich cat. It's definitely going to help you. There are some very quickly coming out shy boys in this stage, and so you'll need enough money to form a stack against them. And the nature of this strategy, as is with so many of these beginner guides, I'd recommend using the CPU once you have your worker cat at max level, the CPU will spam every unit in the most mathematically immediate way possible, much more efficient than any player, thus giving you both a better chance of beating the level and a nice break for your fingers, so that you could have a chocolate finger and a cup of tea instead. Doesn't that sound nice? Now the first thing you want to do is turn your CPU off so that you can take control of the start of the battle. There's the crazed axe, as I said, comes out immediately. All you want to do is basically just stall it with these units while your monies build up. Spawning crazed tanks sort of roughly around the time that the recharge time comes off is about right for stalling the crazed axe. As you can see, I'm doing it a little bit too slowly. The crazed axe is moving forward. When it gets kind of this close, you might want to put out some more units, make sure that it definitely stays in its position, and you'll see a Cecile coming along. And for something like that, bring out your dragons so that they can hit it from behind the other units. So Cecile should give you some decent monies. As you can see, we are now in five figures. I'd recommend when you get to this point, putting all of your meat shields out, perhaps starting to develop a stack as well. And here are the shy boys. So bring out all of those stacker units, those long range ones, as well as the crazed well, because it will have that effectiveness against red and it will get at least some hits on the shy boys. And when you see the second one, I recommend bringing out Bahamut, then bringing out Valkyrie and possibly when Bahamut's attack has landed like that, hopefully it does land, put your CPU on and it should be able to take care of the rest. The reason you're waiting a little bit before putting your CPU on is so that you can make sure you've got enough monies for the CPU to be able to put out all your units, just giving it a little bit of breathing space rather than letting it take charge immediately, spend all the money and then have no money to put interim meat shields out, which obviously would cause you a lot of trouble. Meat shielding is especially important in this stage because of the attacks of the crazed axe. It chops through your meat shielding like nobody's business and freezes what's in front of it. If it gets through your meat shielding, it will freeze your big ticket items, kill them very quickly while they have no chance to defend themselves, and then you really will be scuppered. Speaking of being scuppered, our Valkyrie has not actually frozen these units enough, and unfortunately, this is quite likely to happen. It's relatively near coming off recharge time, but we'd probably lose before that happens. This is just a part of doing the stage in this kind of bare bones way, where the effects that you have against enemies are only one fold in Holy Valkyrie. If you have anti-red and anti-floating traded units, obviously that process is going to be a lot easier because the proccing, the program random occurrence, the abilities that you have against these units are twofold or more. More chances to stop the crazed axe and the red enemies chomping through you and coming towards your base. 
If you're doing it in a kind of bare minimum sense like this, you will probably need to pause before you lose and force close, moving the app out of the memory of your device and then going back into the app and it will invite you back into the battle without having wasted energy or items at the start of the battle. And that is exactly what we're going to do here. It's a process of trial and error as it is in many of these guides if you only have a limited source of proccing against these units. That's another reason why we use the CPU. You're gonna get tired of doing this over and over again if it's you doing all of the spamming. So we're gonna do the same thing again, just trying to stall the crazed axe. Doing the crazed tanks when they come off recharge time is pretty much just right for stalling the crazed axe. One dies as the next one comes along and you're unlikely to get crossover of deaths so actually, we're being very efficient with money's doing it this way. And here we'll put all our meat shields out again and start to stack. Now that we're in five figures, it should be fine to do this. You want to make sure that you're keeping around 8,000 monies or more so that you can get the Bahama and the Valkyrie out. And then hopefully some in reserve to lead the CPU to it. So, Shy Boy appears. I'm going to put a Bahama out by the time that arrives on the scene. I imagine the next Shy Boy will be coming along. Might be slightly mistimed, but actually no. Looks like it's going to be just right. Put out all these units, put Valkyrie out, and let the CPU on. And we'll see this time if we get a more favourable proc rate. That was a good shot from Bahamut there, you could see. But the Shy Boys keep on coming along, so we really need that freezing or any anti-red or floating abilities that you have. Of course, either will work on the Shy Boy, because it is red and floating. And there we go, another fantastic Bahamut shot. Now, regular viewers of this guide and, well, players of Battle Cats, frankly, will know that Bahamut is not definitely going to be that reliable. It very often misses shots, and if you don't see Shy Boys get knocked back from Bahamut shots, it's probably because Bahamut has missed. And unfortunately, that does just tend to happen quite a lot. Remember, if they start getting onto your base and chopping down the health of it, force close, try again, and you won't have wasted any energy or items. Now, Valkyrie doesn't reliably stay alive. That's also important to note. If you see it dying, it does that. It needs to get its freezes in. You're relying on it coming to save you, basically, and stopping the advance of the enemies. And it looks like this has happened decently at the start of the battle for us. One Shy Boy will always replace the one that was dead previously. But if you can kill them at regular enough intervals, you'll only have one or two at a time, and you should be able to deal with them unless you get unlucky. You can see that even without the behind armor shots the amount of dragons that we had at least before some of them got hit there was helping to knock back the shy boys anyway and this is why it's so important to build up a huge stack of these units they can stay behind your meat shielding stay alive for most of the battle and just chip away massively at the crazed axe and the shy boys to a point where they don't become much of a problem anymore and if your meat shielding stays strong and you don't get caught out which isn't a bad reflection on you i should point out this just happens sometimes you should be able to eventually see bahamut's getting stacked but then again you saw one of them die there it's the circle of life it moves through this level let me tell you you can see here definitely the advantage of the cpu obviously i've got no hands on this screen at all and the cpu is taking care of it completely and seeing to the battle there's evidence there that Valkyrie doesn't follow very well that outranging general rule of thumb that I talk about because we're relying on it for its abilities and not its sort of long-range survivability. And there we have it. The Crazed Axe has been defeated, but not the first time, as you'll note. Sometimes the start off to this battle doesn't go well if you don't get enough procs in from Valkyrie, and that is not a bad reflection on you. That is just the luck of the draw. Luckily... With this stage, you are able to try it again without wasting any energy because of force closing. And upon beating this stage for the first time, you will be given the Crazed Axe. Unfortunately, all Crazed Axe really gives you is a rite of passage to getting the true forms of these Crazed Units, the Manic Stages, because now all of the Crazed Stages are done, and I'd recommend doing Crazed Axe last because it doesn't help you get any of the other Crazed Units. This is important to reiterate, if you don't have other Crazed Units, I just definitely recommend getting them first. There is no rush with getting the Crazed Axe because it's barely going to help you anywhere. It's probably worth, if you're on the day of Crazed Axe, waiting for next month to do it. Getting other Crazed Cats that will help you in this level first. It's important to think about the order in which you're doing Crazed Cat stages because you can use which Crazed units you get to your advantage. 
And so that will do it for the Crazed Axe Guide. If you have any queries, any struggles, please explain them to me and I will do my best to help. Any questions, ask them. Now that all of the Crazed Cat stages are done, we're going to be looking forward to completing all of Into the Future Chapter 3. So be doing those levels in the meantime, getting treasure as you go along. But until then, I bid you goodbye and I hope you enjoyed.